Subhanallah, what is his affair? This ikhwan shows us the importance of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So qala rasul, and our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ikhwan, on more than one occasion he has mentioned the importance ikhwan of the qira'ah of the Qur'an. The recitation of the Qur'an, innu hujjatun laka aw alayk. And either the Qur'an will either be a proof for you or against you. And here we see that the Qur'an for the believers, they proof for him. And then, my ilm, okay, how did you come to know this? And he says, what? Qara'atu kitab Allah. I read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa sadaqtuhu, and I believed in it. I read the book of Allah and I believed in it. Thalika al-kitabu la rayba fi. That is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is no doubt whatsoever in it. There is no doubt. Barakallahu feekum whatsoever in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Ikhwan, that I read the book of Allah and I believed in it and I affirmed it. I believed in it and I affirmed it. Allahu alam. We'll discuss, actually, Ikhwan, Barakallahu feekum. That's a very good question. And it's important for us to deal with this issue. Uh, the issue of what is the language of the people of paradise and what is the language of the people? Because if that was the case, then we would say the language of the people of the hellfire would also be Arabic, right or wrong? Because in the Quran, they respond in Arabic. So that's an issue, inshallah ta'ala, that we'll actually discuss, inshallah ta'ala, not tonight. Uh, it's a very important topic, inshallah ta'ala, and perhaps we'll be able to deal with it in the coming weeks, inshallah ta'ala. So much to cover. But that would be a very important topic for us to cover, inshallah ta'ala. So we'll discuss it in the Ta'ala, the issue of uh, the languages and the likes of these particular matters. Um, the languages of the people of the Akhirah and all of the Shaykh and our Shaykh Mukbara and the Tawa with regard to that. So we'll read from some of those things, inshallah Ta'ala, and bring about some benefit. So just remind me, text me that, inshallah Ta'ala, and remind me. We'll try to make that part of next week's lesson. And then he says, فَيُنَادِ مُنَادٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ أَنْ صَدَقَ عَبْدِي فَافْرِشُوهُ مِنْ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَلْبِسُوهُ مِنْ الْجَنَّةِ وَيَفْتَحُ لَهُ بَابٍ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ And then it will be said, Ikhwan, that a person will, or a voice, we should say, will call out from the heavens, صَدَقَ عَبْدِي The slave has believed. So give him a place of rest from paradise and give him clothing from the clothing of paradise. As we also mentioned, the shroud from paradise. And the original part of this narration, it will be shrouded from the shrouds of paradise. What time is Aisha? Huh? Oh, we should be able to finish the narration. Hey, now. From the shrouds of paradise. Uh, from the dressings of paradise. And open for him a door or a gate from the gates of paradise. قَالَ فَيَأْتِهِ مِنْ رَوْحِهَا وَطِيبِهَا and then he will be given some fragrances from the fragrances of paradise and his grave will be expanded for him as far as the eye can see. As far as the eye can see. And he says, And in the wording that comes in the, the Sahih of Imam Muslim, And he says, From the Hadith of Anas, and in the narration of Quran that is collected by Imam Muslim from the narration of Anas ibn Malik that his grave will be expanded for him the length of 70 hand spans 70 hand spans and when we say hand span we don't mean a hand we mean an arm's length a hand span could be an arm's length also in the technical definition of what is a, a, a hand span it can also mean the, the length of an arm, an arm's length. But it's called a hand span. As you know, Ikhwan, that the word yed in Arabic, sometimes it means hand, and sometimes it could mean all the way up to the shoulder, the ra, yani the whole of the arm, as you'll find sometimes in the Quran, for the ad him, uh, to their right side, you know, like the, the right hand to their right side. And then he says, Hey, nah. And then he continues in the hadith. Qala wa yaatihi rajulun hasnu al-wajhi, hasnu al-thiyabi, tayyib al-reeh. And then a man will come to him, a very handsome man, or a very handsome face, 
with a very beautiful dress and clothing, smelling very beautiful with a very beautiful fragrance. فَيَقُولُ أَبْشِرْ بِالَّذِي يَسُرُّكَ هَذَا Glad tidings to that which will make your affair easy for you. Ha, on this day of yours, الَّذِي كُنْتَ تُوعَدْ On this day that you were promised. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ مَنْ أَنْتَ And it will be said, and who are you? فَوَجْهُكَ الْوَجْهِ يَجِهُ بِالْخَيْرِ For you have the face of one who has come with all good. فَيَقُولُ أَنَا عَمْلُكَ الصَّالِحِ And then that beautiful face will say, I am your righteous deed. I am your noble deed. How many times have we mentioned in Quran that the only thing that will remain with a man in the grave and in the akhirah are his deeds? How many times have we mentioned in Quran the Prophet Muhammad said that three things follow the maid to the grave. Two things come back and one remains with him. That which comes back are his family and his wealth and that which remains with him are his deeds. Can you imagine now, Quran, that those deeds become a handsome and beautiful face dressed in beautiful garments and clothing and smelling of beautiful fragrances? The things that the human being desires and covets and loves, and then when the individual asks, and who are you who has come with all of this good, it seems that you are someone who has come with so much good, then he will say, I am your righteous deeds. I am your righteous deeds. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكِمَ السَّاعَةَ حَتَّى أَرْجِعَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ وَمَالِي And then the person will say, Oh Allah, establish the hour. Bring about the day of resurrection. So that I can be returned to my family and my wealth. Sure. So now he has the deeds. So now he hopes to return back to his wealth and to his family on the, on the day of resurrection. Meaning, to be returned from those from his family, from the righteous. And then after mentioning Ikhwan, after mentioning that affair of the believer who will ask Allah to hasten the coming of the hour, so as to be returned to all nobility and honor that he had earned in his hayatul dunya in his worldly life. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, and then as for the slave who was a disbeliever, the slave who was a disbeliever, and then the Shaykh Ikhwan, he brings a number of different wordings of this narration. وَفِي رِوَايَةِ أَبِي دَاوُدْ وَإِنَّ الْكَافِرْ إِذَا وُضِعَ In the narration in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, the word kafir is also used, disbeliever. Just a quick point, Ikhwan Barakallahu with regards to this issue of using the word kafir. I had a Muslim the other day I was discussing, trying to give them some irshad, some uh, yeah, calling to something, to something of the da'wah salafiyyah, calling them to the sunnah. And I mentioned something about the kuffar, or I said kafir, and they said, astaghfirullah, you shouldn't call people kafir. Barakallahu And this is something, Ikhwan, that even in the media, in the media, Ikhwan, I remember they were actually talking about some books that were in some of the different Muslim countries, and they were saying they use hate speech. They use words of hate. See, look, look, they have the word kafir in the book. Well, barakallahu feekum, Ikhwan, the word kafir means disbeliever. One who disbelieves. It's not like someone's cursing someone's mother. Actually, you probably would have your mother cursed before you would like to be called a disbeliever. May Allah protect us, preserve us upon this deen of Islam. But the point is, Ikhwan, that do we see the craftiness, Ikhwan, of those who disbelieve, kufar? That they would try to make this word, yani, something of a word that is distasteful for even for them who disbelieve. They would like something, I guess, a bit different, a bit softer, or whatever it may be, yani. But there's no question, Ikhwan, that Allah calls them the kufar throughout the Quran. Ya ayyuhal kafirun. For those who disbelieve, barakallahu But this word kafir, barakallahu ikhwan, is an Arabic word with a meaning, a, lingu- a linguistic meaning, and it means those who disbelieve, barakallahu So to call this hate speech, again, ikhwan, barakallahu it just goes to show the trickery of the kufar. That they will label this hate speech. They will label this hate speech when rather, ikhwan, it is calling everyone by their proper names. It is calling everyone by their proper names. So he says in the meaning in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, he says kafir. He uses the word kafir. And then he says, Ikhwan wa min hadithi Abi Huraira wa fi riwayati lil Bukhari min hadithi Anas wa amma al-munafiq wal kafir. And then it says in a one of the wordings in Bukhari, Ya'ani, on the authority of Anas, the word munafiq is used, or kafir. The word munafiq 
or Catherine. Of course, the monastic is a dispute.